You bring up the past, it, it doesn't exist. But we are infatuated with things that don't <laughs> exist. And we declare them as real. Yesterday has come and what? Gone. It has nothing to do with now. It's a was. And there is no was in Hebrew, so you can't even mention it. Now, I try and spend the whole day without saying was. Because it's absence of. It doesn't longer here. It doesn't exist. So why are you speaking of yesterday? Why? Well, that person used to be in love with me. Well, not in love with you anymore. <laughs> but if I say the right thing, they will fall back in love. No, they're not falling back in love with you at all. <laughs> they won't. They've changed. You've changed. You're not the same people anymore. That's scary. And we want everything to stay the same. It can't. Your future depends on what you do and how you act. What? Now. You are de deciding what's happening in the future. You're making the future come to pass. Do you understand? Don't live in the past. The past no longer exists. It doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. All you have is the now and the what? Future. And that's all you can speak of in Hebrew. One of the most fascinating things that I was always told, they always pulled me aside and the bishops would say, you know, they'd say, you know, Frank, don't do this. You will be such a great bishop if you would just let go of the primitive church. Just let it go. It's past. It is. No, it's still applicable. It's a primitive document. The Bible is obsolete. Embrace the real church. The primitive church is dead. It died in one lifetime. No, the book's still here. That's the map. I can get there. I can get there. And I have. I am not giving up on what Christ taught, nor the Apostle Paul, because it works. But it doesn't work like the Greeks and Romans wanted. God doesn't obey you. He's not a genie where you just rub the genie and get three wishes. You know, rub me, give me three wishes. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> the lamp, that's right. You rub the lamp, that's right. <laughs> So, your cut or wound is gone. Where did it go? It went to wound heaven. No, it didn't go to wound heaven. It's the absence of healing. It's the absence of wholeness. It's not a thing. Want to see my scars? No, I don't want to see your scars. This is what happened to me. I got more scars. Look at the ones on my ass. No, I don't want to see your scars. <laughs> you understand? I'm not interested in where you've been, or what you did, or the results of your stupidity. I'm interested in where you are now and where you're going. So is God. So is God. When your sickness is gone, where did it go? It never existed in the first place. It's the absence of what? Health. Absence of wholeness. That's it. So rather than concentrating on your wound or your sickness, concentrate on your what? Your healing, your wholeness. Don't identify. Don't make a reality out of nothing that doesn't exist. Don't give substance to absence. Does this make sense to you? 
You've got to think God's thoughts. The reason the Word of God doesn't work in our culture and because we've got to create a whole new one that's based on the Roman religions is because we don't understand what's being said. I'm poor. Give him a million dollars. <laughs> Spend it all. Oh, almost. You understand the problem? Don't make your identification something. And it really irks me because when I try and teach people how to gain in wealth and authority and power, they reject it because they believe that they're not supposed to be anything more than a common laborer. My father was a laborer, my mother was a laborer, and I'm only going to be nothing more than they are. Well, I thought God was your father. Something's wrong. Either you are what the word of God says you are, or you are not. Are you in a zero God? Or are you just a child of parents who are naive and ignorant? And inexperienced. Does that mean that's where your limits are? Don't do that to yourselves. God gives you a way that is amazing. But you got to do it his way. He's not a genie. He's not a Greek and Roman God. He will not respond to you. He don't take orders from you. He doesn't bargain with you. His way has been set since the beginning, and it will not be altered or changed. It's done. You either walk in it, or you walk out of it. So what about evil and sin? What is it? What is evil and sin? Absence of? Absence of truth? Absence of wisdom? Absence of correct knowledge. Absence of application of knowledge. Absence of absolute wisdom of that knowledge. And zero understanding. Is that interesting? Now, try and write down and define who you are. Not with what you've been. Not even what you have now, but what you inside are going to become. What are you becoming? Because remember, God looks on the what? On the heart. Take this time now and write down who you are becoming. Not as you are, not as you were. What are you becoming? Where are you going to be two years and three years from now? Ready? Do it. You're seeing yourself not as you've been, not as you are, but as you can become. That's the realm of God. That's what he wants you to be. Extraordinary. He takes fishermen and makes them extraordinary. He takes herdsmen and makes them kings. God starts with nothing. You must start with nothing and build. Not with what was but what God says is, and redo your future. Not the path that you're on, but creating a new path. Does that make sense? All right. So now, let's continue. Are you all enjoying this? Yes. All right, do you want Moa? All right, that doesn't sound very enthusiastic. Okay. You want Moa? Yes. You want Moa? Yes. <laughs> 
You want more? Yes. I'm going to give you more. All right. We're now going to cover sin. Oh, don't you know babies are born in sin? <laughs> it's this thing that's evil inside them, <laughs> and they grow, and they become monsters. Haven't you been around? No, that's not true. Well, maybe it is, but not this. They're, babies are not born in sin. Babies are born ignorant, naive, an incomplete conception of reality. They cannot survive because they don't understand reality. They must be protected from it until they're able to handle it. And some people are kept children all the way until they're 30. Some are protected from it for 40. Some never even see it. Most of the people on Skid Row are people that had their mommies and daddies protect them all their life. And when mommy and daddy died, they had nowhere to go but the street. Because they didn't know life. And they didn't know what to do with it. They have every excuse not to try. Have you worked with people coming out of prison? I was a halfway house. Not me, my house was. <laughs> you understand? They don't know. They want things to be the same. They can't. That's not reality. Reality is a state of what? Change. You have to have the mind to handle it. Otherwise, it will take you down. Got it? It's a world of disappointment. It's a world of your expectations being destroyed. And if you don't have the right, right mindset, you're going to run right into it and destroy yourself. Don't do that. God prepares you for changes in every category of life. But you got to do it God's way. God does not obey you. All right. So let's let's look at sin. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. That's not what we got it all wrong. So the Greek and Roman side, what do we got? The state of when any of the gods will not hear you nor do what you ask them to do. The state, we're not California, this is the state of mind. Yeah, not the state of California. Though it acts like it sometimes. Great imposters. The state where you are not protected by any of the what? Gods. The state of being sick or dying and the gods not help. They will not help. That's what it means. That's how the Greeks and Romans looked at it. If you are, if you're going into engage in combat, you need to call on Mars and you do things for Mars. And if the, your opponent does more than you do for Mars, then you're going to lose in combat. So you have to do more than your opponent does for Mars to make Mars happy, to empower you with strength to beat him. So you find out, wait, he give to Mars. I'm going to give, on Mars, I'm going to give you more. It's a bargaining thing. I'll do this for you if you do this for me. That's not a god. Zeus or Jupiter. You go to Jupiter and say, if you will make me the leader like Caesar did. Caesar went to Jupiter and says, well, you set me up as Caesar. I will build you the biggest temple of all. He crossed the Rubicon, conquered Rome and became the emperor and built the biggest temple to Jupiter. It was a bargain. It was a deal. You can't play this game with God. This is nothing to do with God whatsoever. God is not a man. You can't play that game. So how do you correct this on that side? Well, you have two things you can do. But let's look at the other side. This is the eastern side. What is sin from the eastern point of view? Which is where the Bible is written to. Being ignorant of what is right and proper, necessitating doctrine or unskilled in application, requiring reproof or what? 
And that's the purpose of the word. Well, how do I get God to protect me? How do I get God to do what I want him to do? Wrong God. Wrong God. God's word, the way it is in the East, is if you have God's thoughts, God's priorities, and God's identity, every challenge or loss will be a victory and a gain. Always. All right, everybody inhale. Okay, stop. Don't exhale. Inhale again. Stop. Don't exhale. Inhale again. Stop. Don't exhale. Inhale again. Notice it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller every time. Why is that? Now, in order to get more, what do you got to do? You've got to let go of what you got. To get more, you've got to let go what you got. If you will not let go of what you are, you can't become greater. You don't believe me? Try it again. Inhale. Stop. Don't exhale. Inhale again. Stop. Inhale again. Stop. So next, exhale, inhale again. Notice that each time gets smaller and smaller and smaller. The only way to get any greater is you have to get rid of it, what? All and start over. You have to get rid of what? All and start over. If a little child has something in his hands, how do you get it away from him? They grab a hold of it and yank on it. He's like, no. No. Give him something else that he has to let go of what he's got. He has to let it go. Patricia learned when we have our macaw, we're feeding him, and he's chowing down on something. Don't offer him something else because then he'll drop it and grab that. And they won't go back to that. You got to let go of it. So having agape, God's thoughts, priorities, and identity. And it's levels upon levels upon levels. You let go of the past, you get something greater. Look at Joseph. What happened to Joseph? He lost, he gained, and then he lost what? Everything. And then he gained more, ten times more, and then he let go of and lost everything. And then that next time, he gained what? Ten times more. <laughs> Job lost everything and got back double everything he had. You've got to understand, you cannot keep acquiring. You have to what? Let go. To get that which is greater. All right? How many are females here? Ladies. Right? You were a little girl? Remember when you were a little girl and you liked candy? You got some money, what'd you do with it? When did you get money and stop buying candy and buy makeup? Do you still go back to being a little girl? Do you see the puddle and run in there and jump in it? It says splashes. No, you don't. You had to let go of a childhood to become an adult. You lot to let the past go. You're going to make mistakes developing a new one? Oh, yep. So, is it worth it in the end? Yeah. Oh, wait. Unbelievably. The more of God's thoughts and images that are also ours will increase and speed are healing, third John verse 2. This is not only to the Bible, it's written throughout all of Asia. That's why they seek to know and understand who? God. Because that is healing. So, well, on this side, Greek and Roman, what must you do to appease the gods? If you sin, what do you do? Well, you, you offer sacrifice. 
or you give them a what? A gift. And now you're going to be right with them. Isn't that how it works with people? Girls, if a guy wants to take you to, to, to bed, what does he give you? Chocolate, flowers. Don't accept it unless you understand what's on the inside, but it's got a hook. There's everybody wants something and they give you something. How many here say thank you when someone does something for you? Now you owe them. Good, good going. Why do you say thank you? Now you owe them. Don't say thank you. <coughs> Unless you really understand why they gave it to you for. What are they going to ask you to do after they give it to you? Because you owe them. It's called reciprocity. One of the biggest marketing ploys and, and controls there is. Repeat after me. I will not say thank you. I don't care how many times your parents told you that. You say thank you, now you owe that person. And they expect to be paid. Is that making sense? Why do you do things for people? So they will owe you. Either you, that's how you get back in line with them. And with God, it doesn't work at all. What does God require? He's not a Greek and Roman God. What does he require? He wants us to what? Grow up. He doesn't want us. This keeps you the same. The Greek and Romans, you never grow up. You never grow up. You stay a kid the whole time. You don't want, you never know what reality is. Everything's, everything is protected and kept away from you. So when you get an adult, everybody's there to keep it away from you. It's not how it works. And then when you try and you get hit with reality, it hits hard. And you're not prepared for it. So what happens on the eastern side? You blow it, you seek and receive what? Reproof and what? What did I do wrong? How do I do better? There's no such thing on this side. None. You're a sinner. Now you must pay the what? You're going to lose this, or this is going to happen to you. This is bullshit. You don't learn anything from this. It's a way of being slaves to someone else. It puts you under someone else's authority to judge you and take from you or give to you at their whim. Don't get caught on this side. You're not made here to be slaves of the world. You're made to be set what? Free. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. You look really fine today. All right. You look absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> don't I look, if you say to me, Frank, don't you look great? And I go, you have such excellent taste. <laughs> Are you taking credit for it? No. I am what I am because of who? God. Well, I don't think you had anything to do with it. <laughs> is this making sense? Is it the same as the world? No. Someone says, you are the most extraordinary person I have ever met. And you say, you have excellent perception. <laughs> <laughs> don't say thank you don't owe anybody the word of God says owe no man what anything it's not a joke well you gotta say please and thank you 
That's not what the word says. Is this all making sense? You blow it, you seek what? You seek and what? And believe me, God is real. He will give you reproof and correction. He will help you overcome it. But most of the time, we just don't want to do it. We just want to give them a gift. And that will work. Or we sacrifice something. Don't do that. People say, you know why you tithe? For God's protection. What are you? What is he, the Godfather? What are you tithing for? Why do you give abundant sharing? Because you want God's protection? Are you buying it? Are you forcing God to obey you? They want God to be the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, Jesus Christ, God and Father, the Apostle Paul's God. They want him to be Zeus. Zeus is from the imagination of man. We are from the imagination of God. Get the sources right. So tithing, does that protect you? Is that protection money from the Godfather? I'll make a deal you can with you. Yeah. Give me money, I protect you. That's this side. The Italian mafia. God is not in charge of the mafia. When my little sister died, what did the Roman Catholic Church tell me I had to do? They said she was in hell. And I had to get her out of hell and into purgatory. We had to sell our car. And that bought the prayers of the bishop to get her out of hell and into purgatory. Then it required the archbishop to pray to get her from purgatory into heaven. She was only three years old when she died. And we, as good Roman Catholics, did it. My, moral, my mother bowered against the house. I worked an extra job. We sold our car. We did everything we could to get my little sister out of purgatory and into heaven. What a crock of shit. When according to the word of God, when someone's dead, they're what? They're dead. You can't do anything about it. They're gone. They're past. They no longer exist. What makes you valuable is that you're alive what? Now. The dead can't do anything for God. You're valuable now when you're changing and growing and developing on God's word. And God will help you with knowledge, wisdom, and what? Understanding. But you can't buy it. He's not a Greek and Roman God. What is he doing? You're making a commitment to him. It's called the blood covenant. In the Eastern culture, what happens when a man marries a woman? It's a covenant. Who pays for that woman to make sure that marriage is good? Her father pays one-tenth of all he owns to the husband every year. Today, no man in the Western world would even think about getting married. Last thing you want to have is daughters. Oh no, I ain't going to do that because one tenth of my income. If you have ten daughters, you might as well commit suicide. Right? Because <laughs> every year you pay what? That dowry, it's 10%. It's a blood what? Covenant. It can't be broken without someone dying. And people say, I want to take the blood covenant. And the next hour, they break it. Well, how about just make it simple, like the mantle. That's where people don't tie, they just abundantly share. 
They just give of their abundance. Well, today I got my bill from the, from the credit card company, and it's a little higher, and I, I didn't want to shut off my cable network, so I'm not going to abundantly share this time. Okay. So you're no longer under the mantle covenant. We at least keep the word as truth and speak what the word says, and all of a sudden they're saying everything opposite the word, and they break the salt covenant. And where's God in their relationship? They and God are about as far away as you can get, and they think they're of God. God gives, God says, okay, you blew it. That was yesterday. Now, would you like some reproof and correction? That's when it hurts. Like, oh, you mean I got it? Yep. Uh, yep. Welcome to the real world. Well, can I just give you a gift or something or sacrifice my dog? <laughs> no. God never required sacrifices. All right. To give you an example, people say, oh, yeah, he did. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. No, he didn't. Let's go to Isaiah. Grab your Bibles. Let's go to Isaiah. I'm going to read to you Isaiah. Not the whole book. I mean, that would take a while. <laughs> Listen. I mean, who's carefully here? Listen carefully. So in Isaiah, he reads as follows. Chapter 1. Verse 11. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, said the Lord? I am full, that means fed up, with the burnt offerings of rams, of fat, of fed beasts. I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of the he goats. When you come to appear before me, who hath required this of your hand? Who told you to sacrifice to me? Bring no more. What does that mean? No more. Stop. Where'd they learn this from? Well, the Greeks and Romans that were next door. <laughs> Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons, the Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies. I cannot away with. I am not going to handle it anymore. That's it. It is what? So if you sacrifice to God, it is what? Iniquity. If you offer things, it is what? Iniquity. If you give a gift to get God to change his mind, it is what? Iniquity. It's a lie. It's deception. God will not tolerate it. Well, it's just, that's what you expect on this side. Oh, it's not written to this side. The word of God's written to this side. Jesus Christ is not a Roman. Your new moons, your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. You are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Well, you gave him a gift. You sacrificed your dog. Isn't that beautiful? You come home. Your child's done something. He's standing there. He goes, I'm sorry, Mom. I broke your favorite dish. But that's okay, I, I, I just killed our dog. No, we got, we got bigger issues here. We got big issues. Does God want sacrifices? Let's go into Psalms chapter 5, chapter 5, yeah, 5, 0, 50, all right? Asap the recorder, you read about that in... The time of Samuel. All right. Eight, chapter Psalm 50. <clears throat> Psalm 50. It's right before 51. After 49. Verse 7. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel. I will testify against thee. I am God, thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house. Why isn't God going to reprove them? Because he has and they won't listen. 
So he's not going to tell them anymore. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy fold. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon the thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountain, the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. For the world is mine and the fullness thereof. I will, will I eat the flesh of bulls, drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God, what? Thanksgiving. And pay thy vows. Do what you say you're going to do. Verse 15, and call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee. Just say what you're going to do. What is that? That's the salt covenant. No, we want to give sacrifices. We want to give sacrifices. Every time I've had people stop tithing because they don't know what the hell they're doing. I've had people stop abundant sharing because they don't know what they're doing. They think they're earning, they're tricking God, they're paying for his time, paying for his protection. He's not the Godfather. Just making sense. God is not a Greek and Roman. He is not Zeus. He's not Mars. He's not Jupiter. He's not Neptune. That, that has got to end. What are you tithing for? Because you're part of the blood what? Covenant. That is a requirement. Abraham gave one-tenth of all he had every single year he existed. Israel gave a tithe every single year they existed. When a man's daughter marries a man, one-tenth of everything he has goes to that man. How often? Every single year. Not one time. What do they call that when a... They call that a... Um, oh, what are the women? They have that. This is their um, dowry. Dowry doesn't happen just once. It's every single year. If I get rich, if I marry a whole bunch of women... <laughs> No, they'll drive you into the poorhouse. All right. <laughs> Check with Solomon. He tried that, right? The word of God is not. Repeat after me. The word of God is not about the way of doing the right things. It's about doing of the things the right way. I tithe. Why are you tithing? What's the why? I'm abundantly sharing. Why? No why? You don't know what you're doing. And God can't honor it. People are upset because they wouldn't accept their ties. They don't understand the blood covenant. What are they giving it for? Take it away. Get away from me. You can't play games with God. You can't buy his love. You can't buy his protection. You can't buy. You either think his thoughts and his priorities or forget it. The word of God is not. Boy, Frank, you're just making yourself all kinds of unpopular here. When I taught this, I have been thrown out of more churches than anyone has ever been to. I've been thrown out of more organizations. I've had my titles given to me and then taken away. I've been a bishop. I've been a cardinal. I've been a minister. I've been a lay leader of the Jewish faith. I've been everything. And they immediately, when they start teaching the word, they pull it from me. Prove me the word is wrong. It's an obsolete document. Well, then so is the Constitution and so is your birth certificate.
Man shall not live by bread alone, but what? Every word of God. Well, that no longer applies. Yes, it does. The word of God is not about the way of doing the right things. It's about doing the things the right what? Way. God's way, not ours. We don't dictate God's policy. We don't tell him what to do. Well, I'm not going to tithe anymore. Fine. Don't. If there's nothing of God, I don't want it. Well, if I win the lottery, I'm going to give one-tenth of the ministry. Keep your freaking lottery money. Don't need it. It's not blessed. God's not going to take any part in that. You want to really show that you love God? You take your 10% and you buy something like wood or paper and you put it on an altar and you burn it. That's what I had to do for several years. I took one-tenth th one of everything I had because I had no one to teach me. So I had to go to God. I take one-tenth and just burned, just destroyed it. It belongs to who? God, will you accept this? Here's my heart. Teach me. Help me. Give me reproof. Give me correction. That's why I give it. You're part of the blood covenant. That means you're supposed to take the blaze of Jesus. How much reproof and correction did he get? And then when he was finally put to the test, whether he would give up on God, even at the last moment in the extreme levels of torture, he refused. How close are you to that point? It's talking about being courageous. It's talking about having strength beyond what anyone else is capable of. But we don't want to grow up. We just don't. Well, I do. If nobody else wants to grow up. I'll grow up by myself. Just me and God. I have his word. I have his word. That's the way, the truth, and what? Life.